Okay, yeah, now I can see you. Just a reminder to everyone to um, go to English and mute original audio. Let me get started. Okay, um, do you want to share anything, Gurudev, before you take the questions? Well, hello to everyone. Um, I'm not feeling that well today. I had a booster shot, you know, from the, the uh, COVID and I'm having an allergic effect. So I'm a little weak, but um, that's the news. So let's see how far we can go here with questions. Okay. Yeah. If you need to go, that's, yeah, just letting you know that you can do that. Um, so, so you want to take the questions? Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so this is from, this question is from Chaitanya Das and Pabanabha Swami sent it to me. They're from Peru. So um, he says, you mentioned that the mood in Navadweep Leela is more dasya in some Sakya Rasa. My question is, how should we see the position of Vishnu Priya Devi, since I understand that she is Lakshmi, Lakshmi Devi, the eternal consort of Narayan, and Mahaprabhu is Krishna with the mood of Sri Radha? Yes. Yes, the idea is that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that the... Um, attainment that we aspire for in terms of participating in Gaur Leela is one that is constituted of Dasya Bhakti. And the Dasya Bhakti of Navadweep, like the Dasya Bhakti of Vrindavan, in almost all instances is, is tinged with Sakya. Hmm? Um, you froze, Gurdiv. Yeah, maybe he'll come back. Can you hear me? Yes, now, now we can. Yeah. So the Dasya Bhakti of Navadvip, like the Dasya Bhakti of Vrindavan, the two are same, is tinged with a little bit of Sakya. So this is our ideal in Navadvip. And we find that uh, for the most part, all the devotees had a similar relationship with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, there may be some exceptions amongst paradigmatic figures like his mother, yeah, like Vishnu Priya, you, 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 you mentioned. Uh, Vishnu Priya is thought of in different ways, uh, sometimes as Satyabhama and um, Bhakti Devi, some devotees have identified her in this way, and uh, other notions about her as well. But um, as Satyabhama, then her, her love for Krishna is in Madhurya, according to Jiva Goswami, mixed with Dasya. So in Gorlila, the Dasya becomes um, more prominent than it does in Krishna Lila. But still, obviously, she has a romantic relationship with, with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, she's his wife. So there are some exceptions, hmm? just like we find exceptions in Ram Leela. The typical opportunity, window of opportunity that's offered Ram Bhaktas is to follow in the footsteps of Hanuman and enter into Ram Leela as a Das. Still, we see he has a couple of friends. Hmm? We see he has a mother. You see, he has a consort. 
those speak to us in a way about the possibility of such relationships with Bhagawan that aren't available to us therein in Ram Leela. Um, relationships, for example, that we don't find in Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha Narayan doesn't have a mother. He, 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 he doesn't have um, intimate friends like Ram has with Lakshmi and so forth. So for that reason, we, we consider uh, Ayodhya to be more developed in terms of rasa. Although again, the possibility there for us ourselves is in Dasi Bhakti. So some exceptions of that. When we come to Krishna Leela, then of course all these opportunities present themselves, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madhurya. We go to Gaur Leela, let's compare it, you know, somewhat to Ram Leela, as I'm saying, yes, he has a mother, yes, he has a wife, uh, he has a father and so forth, but um, he's Prabhu. Uh, he shows himself to be Bhagwan at times, and otherwise, uh, and, he, and even his mother, of course, will see that, but um, the greater balance of the devotees serve him in Dasya Bhakti. So I hope that helps. I don't think that they're on the call today. So yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Hope that helps. Um, Krishna Das? Dandava Pranams. Uh, good morning, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Um, so let's see. I was recently reading and listening to some of your articles and lectures on the topic of Siddha Pranali and the potential for a revelation of the Siddha Deya of a devotee by either Harinam or one's guru. Um, so from my understanding, based on what I've heard thus far, the practice of Siddha Pranali has in some cases historically and currently been misapplied either by devotees having their Siddha Deyas revealed to them prematurely, or that some have even turned giving so-called Siddha Deyas into a kind of business. So I was wondering if you could uh, speak a little bit about the topic of proper revelation of Siddha Deya and particularly my question is this, um, in the case, in either case of how Siddha Deha is revealed to the devotee, is the Siddha Deha of a particular devotee something that is fixed for that devotee prior to their actual eligibility to meditate on it, or is it established firmly at the moment of revelation by Harinam or the guru after the devotee has attained uh, inclination toward a particular ideal in Golok and significant enough uh, loba that qualifies them to meditate effectively on Siddha Deha? Well, regardless of what information one may receive about uh, that ideal, um, what is uh, required in all instances is progress in bhakti that affords realization. And uh, this involves consistent over what, what Rupa Goswami, he uses the word vasanas. Hmm? Rupa Goswami asks a question in his own Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu that having spoken about the different stai bhavs, is there a gradation of them? Hmm? And he gives a gradation with Madhurya Rasa being the most, the, the Rasa that affords the most intimacy with Bhagavan. He poses the question, why doesn't everybody choose that then, if that's the best? He says, well, because of vasanas, they make their choices. Hmm? So vasanas are uh, some scars, and some scars are a collection of vrittis, so impressions. These are all impressions. So uh, a, a number of like impressions, in this case, it would be bhakti some scars. Hmm? Uh, uh, eventually turn into some scars. Hmm? And then some scars turn into vasanas. So th this is very intense then, the vasana hmm? uh, stage of, um, of, of impressions for bhakti having, having been built up, so to speak. Hmm? So 
Typically, what, what Rupa Goswami, what the commentators have explained is by association with a particular a sentiment um, for in this lifetime, in other lifetimes, reaching the point of vasanas, it determines then what um, one's uh, attainment will be. Hmm? Otherwise, broadly speaking, the attainment is dependent upon association, mercy, and the effort that we uh, we put into it, both kripa, mercy, and effort, exerting our, our will. So, so some sects, they, you know, they give out a prototype of this is the, this is the manjari, she's like this, and this is your ideal, and you should think about it like that. Um, and, and, and others, uh, don't do that, uh, like Bhaktisiddhan Sarasthataka didn't do that, um, but he emphasized uh, practice. Bhakti Vinod kind of, Taka kind of came in the middle between assigning, you know, or telling you this is your, who you are, or what you'll be, which is really, if you look at it carefully, it's only giving like a prototype. The prototype is given in, in for the Gaudi Vaishnavas in a book called uh, Sanat Kumar Samhita, which is actually part of the Shiva Purana, and uh, um, for the Manjari. Mm -hmm. So um, some sects say the guru goes into meditation, gets that from Krishna, and gives that to you. I think that is really some kind of preaching strategy to create faith in the disciple that this is what just happened. But from my experience, that's not what happens. Um, and you know, at, at best, uh, the guru is giving a prototype to orient the disciple towards a particular bhava in, in, in that way. Um, and, um, and on the other side of that, you've got, uh, by the practice of bhakti, uh, in conjunction with the association that you have, you know, that ideal you will, you will realize in due course. And as I say, Bhakti Milo Thakur kind of came in the middle there, and, um, he, uh, he taught that as the devotees advance, then they have, they'll develop based on their association or whatever lifetimes and so forth, um, uh, a particular ideal, they will express it to the guru, he or she will edit it, approve it, say yes, you, you, you're understanding nicely, encourage and, um, and, 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 and get that, so to speak, in place. Hmm? But then so much has to be done in terms of uh, very um, one-pointed and intense uh, practice, which is really possible for senior devotees. And that's why Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasthi Thak, or excuse me, Bhakti Vinod Thak, were uh, advised that uh, we shouldn't try to meditate on a Siddhadeha until you've attained like Ruchi or Asakti, because unless you have a taste for this, the prospect of being able to continue that practice is limited at best. But if you've come to the point where uh, other distractions, uh, ideals have been retired and your practice is consistent and it's driven by taste and so forth, then, um, then there's good prospect that that can be cultivated in, in a hands-on way, as opposed to, well, here's your citadea and uh, you, know, you still have a lot of other desires and you're supposed to go and meditate on it. The prospect of being able to do that you know, is, is as I say, uh, limited at best. This is a very, very high thing. You have to understand that. Um, I recently made a post on Facebook about compassion, universal compassion and so forth. And it was appreciated, but the, one of the points I was making is that it's a very high thing, universal compassion. People think there's nothing higher than that. But we say there's something much higher than that. Mm -hmm. And that's bhakti rasa. It passes through universal uh, Atma Gyan itself gives rise to universal compassion, which is a very high thing. But Bhakti Rasa, Prem, in, in the dust. So you have to understand, I think, how high the ideal that we are aspiring to ha is. Uh, Brahma was bewildered by it when he was, uh, had firsthand experience of, the, of Krishna's playmate.
Rude if you're frozen. I don't even know if that helps because I don't know if you can hear me. I'm back. Okay. So, so Brahma's playmates, yeah, Brahma's saw oh, Krishna with his playmates, and he was just overwhelmed by what that was all about. And this is this is Brahma. I mean, he's not an ordinary uh, person. <laughs> so it's important, I think, to emphasize how high that is, and that's one of the one of the um, emphasis is of our particular party bar coming through Bhakti Vinod and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Um, not that um, we won't think about it at all, but um, we shall try to position ourselves in such a way that Krishna and his internal energy Shakti will be attracted to us and reveal to us, uh, open their arms to us. Rather than we try to see them, we try to act in such a way that they would want, they'll take notice of us. Hmm? So Putra Raga put the gold of Abhangi Matalahari Jan Kirtanaranga. Hmm? This was a saying of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur that Pujapachira Marsh thought really encapsulated. Sorry, that's the internet. This was a statement of Bhakti Siddhanta poem of his that Chidamarsh thought really captured um, his, the Thakur's thinking, understanding, thinking about um, this uh, Bhakti Rasa, attainment of the Bhakti Swaroop, and so forth. And the idea of the verses that do Hari Kirtan, hmm? Hari Nam San Kirtan. And, 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 and be prepared to shed, you know, your blood for that is kind of the way he would talk about it. Uh, full giving of yourself to Hari Kirtan and, the, and have reverence, not for Krishna, like they do in Vaikuntha for Narayan, but have reverence for the associates of Krishna in, Br in Vrindavan, who they are, Nanda, Yasoda, Sridham, Sudam, uh, you know, Alita Visaka, Upamanjari, with 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 reverence, we worship them, and then through through Hari Kirtan, that reverence will be broken. They will take notice of us and open the gates, so to speak. So that was his basic uh, approach to the matter. You know, others have different approaches, and we may disagree with them, or uh, there may be room to agree with them. Yes, it could be done that way. Um, but after all, what we're looking for is the result here. And there's much talk about it, much information out and about and so forth, but there's very little example of what that really constitutes. Mm -hmm. And it's rather unbecoming in one sense to be uh, preoccupied with it mentally or intellectually or apparently through practice but then, um, uh, truth be told, uh, you look up the guy on the internet, and he's he's into uh, you know uh, some political you know whatever uh, issue or or some bringing up some old song or something or, or you know I mean th th these things that don't go together. Um, uh, the kind of bhajan that is really focused on revealing, uh, gaining access to the, to, to the Leela in terms of the opportunity that's been presented to you. This is very high, very intense, very um, um, focused, one-minded one and so forth. So you know, we, can, we try to come in the middle, we, we, we educate our students, give them information and so on and so forth. But we like to emphasize the fact that uh, as Saraswati Thakur did, it's, it's not something you're gonna attain too quickly and that's okay, hmm? that's okay. We can find out about it and that's what you should do. Vishwana um, Chakrabhi Thakur gives an gives example that if you wanna milk a cow, okay, great, what do you do? Well, you're gonna have to learn, you know, about you'd have to do research milk, 
how to milk them. You know, there, there, there's a method to it. You don't just go up and say, give me some milk. So there's some research. Research about it. Your question is along those lines. You're frozen again. I was saying theoretical, you get a theoretical understanding. The theoretical understandings are only as good as they serve to compel us to practice. You know, theology and study of the scripture are not uh, ends unto themselves. Hmm? They are a means to help one get out of one's head, hmm? interestingly enough, and into one's heart. Therefore, I say sometimes, uh, use your head to soften your heart. Hmm? Um, so those are some thoughts. I hope that helps. Uh, yes, thank you. That, uh... That's a very comprehensive answer. That helped a lot. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. How do you? Um, so Braj Bhumi had a question. So, and he sent it in the chat. Um, and he says, of course, many of the most um, renowned of our Guru Parampara um, are those who have offered profound literary contributions. I'm curious about the role and subtle nature of the contributions given by those in our line, such as Forrest Babaji's. Well, I think that uh, if a devotee does not make a literary contribution, um, then he or she may not stand out. Um, um, in the same way or to the same extent, because obviously literary contribution is one that can be shared here and there and, and so forth, even if you don't even meet the devotee. But if someone is not making a literary contribution, then it's, it's more difficult to um, even know about them, right? But uh, nonetheless, um, any devotee makes a contribution, if they're, especially if they're an advanced devotee, and that by way of their example. So. There may be some forest dwellers, if you will, uh, doing near Dunbajan. Uh, you know, Bhakti Siddhanta found such a person in Gorka Shordas Babaji. So, what is his contribution? One time, um, a godbrother of mine uh, who had taken sannyas from Pujapad Sridhar Maharaj formed a temple in North America. And he was putting the pictures of the Guru Parampara on the altar, and he decided not to put Gorka Shordas Babaji's picture on the altar because he thought he was not a significant uh, contributor. Hmm? Comparatively, Bhakti Vinod would have books, Prabhupada had so many books, Bhakti Siddhanta opened so many moths uh, and, and published books himself, and so on and so forth. And so, you know, in the Guru Parampara, there are going to be many gurus. Not all of them are going to stand out with extraordinary literary contributions or. Um, uh, the manifestation station of facilities for bhakti, converting others and so forth. Narutam converted you know, thousands of people. Mirabhadra Goswami converted thousands, even Buddhists and so forth that became known for this, others by their writing and so forth, as you, as you say. Anyway, uh, Puja Patshidamarsh heard about this and he was irate. Hmm? that Gorka Shordas Babaji's picture was not included on that altar. And so after he chastised the disciple, the disciple meekly asked, well, what was his contribution? <laughs> you know, you say that some contribution is greater and we're gonna single those out. Pujapat Sridharmarsh once gave the example, like in science, okay, from the beginning of modern science to today, there are many, 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 many scientists. We don't know all their names. All of them are not necessarily the computer contributors to the scientific. Scientists, um, but some of them have made major contributions like Newton, Einstein, um, you know, and so forth. And so we, we'll highlight those. And so Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsitakur 
once drew his a line of his gurus and just highlighted the major gurus who were connected with different parivars. Hmm? And so this is our line. We're connected to these people. Now, otherwise, there are other people are connected to them, gurus and so forth, but they didn't make as big of a contribution. So this is the idea. So we thought, what, what, you know, what's the contribution of Gore Kishore? And Sridhar just said very loudly, Bhakti Siddhanta, that's his contribution. Enough said. And so so uh, there's an example of someone who made a contribution. And he made a his example. His example became known throughout uh, Bengal and Vrindavan. And, um, you know, I, I think that any such devotees do have some lore about them, some stories about them, testimony about them on the part of their disciples and, and others and so forth. Some books have been published about such devotees in Brudge um, and their, their miraculous lives and so forth, devotees who, who didn't uh, have a literary uh, contribution but have extraordinary stories. Uh, that um, illustrate their um, their uh, depth of their spiritualization. So, if not by some literature, by example, and for that matter, example speaks louder than precept. We could fool people maybe with some literature, but it'd be hard to fool by example. Next question. So Greg had a question um, that he sent to me. Um, his question is how to reconcile verses 1422 through 25 of the Gita, the qualities of a person who has transcended the gunas with those who are inimical to devotees. I don't really understand the question. If there are those who are described that have transcended the gunas, there's one type of category of persons. And then there are those who are inimical to devotees who obviously have not transcended the gunas. Um, so both types of people are out and about. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the latter is there, but then we can learn from them as well as to what not to do. Uh, they set a good example of that for us. Um, 14th chapter is about, what's the title of the 14th chapter? Is it the divine and the demonic? I don't remember. I'm thinking of writing another book. The on three the components of nature. I remember the chap. The divine three components demonic. of nature. What is it? It's about the three components of nature. I can't hear you. I'm trying to read your lips. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, Make sure you've muted original audio and you're on. Yes. Air. Yes. Yeah. I can hear you now. It it's, it's about the three components of nature and their, their, their qualities and their impact on, on people. Oh, yeah. So near guna is one thing and within the gunas is another thing. And there are better and worse situations within the gunas. Those who are inimical to devotees, um, unfortunately, um, um, are in the, in the worst position. So I, I really don't know what, what to answer uh, given what I've, been asked there, I think there must be more to the question that I'm not quite getting. So forgive me for that. If any clarification can come, then I'll try to answer it further. But let's otherwise try another question. Um, I think the like Greg is on call. I wonder if Greg is available just to clarify because I don't know how long, much longer he's going to be on the call to be able to. Yeah, this is the time to do that if he's on. I don't know if he's only able to type. That would be fine too. Yeah, you can message me. He did send me, um, he was like clarifying how to deal with the ladder, the three modes of late. Okay, he said, yeah, he can only type. So he's just gonna type it. Are there other questions in the meantime? The, um, yes, I'll just let him type out like the clarification, uh, like a clarifying, like a, just a, another question. Um, 
or the same, you know what I mean? Um, so Sharda, I think Sharda has a question. Okay. Um, okay, so she wrote, I have a question. When Gaudiya Vaishnavas talk about a loving exchange of love between the Lord and the devotee within devotional service, is it respectful or appropriate to say, especially for less advanced devotees, that this exchange includes the act or concept of receiving by the devotee as well as giving, or is giving and receiving simultaneously happening with chanting and service? For example, are there any specific prayers to give thanks to Krishna or Lord Chaitanya, or is this something that is instructed after initiation? Any suggested reading to know more about the subject? Pranam Sharada. Hmm. So to understand your question, I think you're asking for, aside from hearing and chanting, are there any specific prayers in which one might be, for example, speaking to Krishna, requesting his mercy, um, something to that effect. Um, and, the, um, and in this way, more directly interacting, if you will, with the deity. Um, and the answer is yes, of course. Um, and you'll find that in many of the, the, uh, the prayers. Uh, songs. Uh, Sarada is, is, is half Bengali, so um, say Bangla Bole. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> she, she's big. So there's uh, the, the Gaudiya Padabali is like three, there are 3,000 or so songs of Gaudiya Mahants over you know, hundreds of years with all types of uh, prayers. Um, but aside from that, you, you, you find your frozen gritty. We're back. Namaskar. Yeah. Namaskar. <laughs> um, <So>. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Yes, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> so in, in, in our uh, line, then there has been an emphasis on the prayers of Narasim Thakur and the prayers of Bhakti Vinod, which are many, many songs in simple Bengali. Um, and you may, you, you may find more of an interactive type of, you know, expressions, if you will, therein. Um, uh, and there's a couple of books of Pratana of Narutam Thakur and um, I, don't know, I can't remember the name of another prominent one, but um, a lot of that has been published by um, uh, members of, of um, are probably are coming from Bhakti Vinod, but I would uh, um, turn your attention there. But there are other, aside from that, in the Bhagavatam, we can find prayers of different devotees. Um, for example, there's Brahma's prayers. He gives about 30, 35 prayers after the Brahma Vimohan Leela. Some of them are quite uh, philosophical, but some of them are quite intimate. He aspires to have a residence there in Vrindavan and speaks to Bhagavan about that and so forth. So is that the kind of prayers that you're thinking about? Yes, and prayers to say, um, you know, that I am grateful for the gifts that you've given me because sometimes we don't actually recognize some things that are actually given to us. Yeah, um, Krishna speaks all languages too. So you can just say it out in English or- <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that, that, yes. That'll work, right? Huh? Yes. So, the, Thank and you. also it said, Baba Grahi Janardana. So, the feeling behind what you do is what counts. However, perfectly the execution is secondary. But if your heart's in the right place, 
that's the language that Krishna speaks, heart language. Hmm? Yes, 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 I see. <laughs> Thank and you. Yes, there's a, a lot of reading to do. <laughs> gratitude yeah. is the beginning of, of, of love, actually. That's yeah. the beginning of, of love. So it's a very good place to start. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Very grateful. <laughs> Powerful. Okay. Um, Madhavan has a follow up question. Okay. Someone in Madhavan. I don't know who it is. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Gumaj, can you hear me? I can. The voice of Madhavan. <laughs> the most insignificant voice of Madhavan. Good morning, Gumaj. Um, the, connected to that last question, um, what, um, what does Krishna receive from the worship of a neophyte devotee? Well, um, There's um, a statement in the Gita in the sixth chapter, This is um, with regard to Arjuna's question that having been inspired by Krishna to forego Dharma and take spiritual life rather than the moral life, take up yoga and ultimately bhakti is what he's speaking about, there in that section about bhakti, which is culminating in the sixth chapter. And Arjuna says, well, you know, like, what if I'm not successful? I've given up dharma, now I'm going to be culpable. We're not following the rules of dharma, uh, but I, but what the, the path that you're laying out for me is not easy either. Concentrate the mind and so on and so forth. So what if I'm not successful there? Then I'll be nowhere. And Krishna says, no, don't, don't think like that. He says, he says a lot of things. One of the things he says, if you imperfectly do this bhakti, you'll be better, you'll attain more than if you perfectly do the follow the, the Marnashram Dharma. The hmm? best you can get out of that is to take birth as a Brahma. And Brahma is bowing down to the coward boys of Braj, thinking this is this is like beyond my four heads. There's got uh, they're spinning like tops to see see this. So uh, but otherwise uh, Krishna very affectionately he calling a kritas translated this in a poetic way. He said, sincerity is invincible. Invincible. Hmm? So uh, what the verse says is, no, don't think like that, dear one, Krishna is saying to Arjun. Uh, I said in the beginning of my discourse on yoga that even a little effort in this is never, never lost. Because this is near guna. Otherwise, effort in other types of yoga that are governed by the gunas, well, that 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 will not produce a permanent result, but near guna will. So um, he's kind of connecting the beginning, the first thing he says about yoga with now that he's moving into the end of that discourse on yoga in the sixth chapter. Um, so Prabhupada took it entirely, he's speaking about, about bhakti. Um, and so um, for a neophyte devotee who's uh, offering puja, prayers, and so forth, the Krishna's, what, what does Krishna accept? Well, he accepts the, the sincerity of their, their purpose, even if they do it, you know, do it wrong. We were once uh, in the early days of ISKCON when I was in Los Angeles, um, the old, old temple room, uh, after Mangal Artik, at about six o'clock in the morning or 6.30, we used to gather uh, around, around the Vyasa son of Prabhupada and again sing the samsara prayers of Vishwana Chakrati Thakur, hmm? Guru Vastakam. And um, when Prabhupada was there, once up in his room, he, he could hear the prayer and we were singing one day Guru Shri Chadananda, saying, you know, I offer my obeisances to the lotus feet of the cow. Instead of Guru, he was hearing cow. Mm. Uh, it, we were pronouncing the Sanskrit word wrong, and so he, you know, he corrected it. You know, um, but we told the story. That, I think the story was told to Pujapat Shridham, or she said yes. Yeah. And Krishna might say, "I think you meant this, right? You said that. That was wrong. But I think you meant this." I, so he, he's uh, he can hear the prayers, 
of his sadhakas. This is a question that's posed in Raghavarta Chandrika by Vishwanath Chakavitakura. If you're on the Rag Marg, Krishna's lost in the embrace of Radha, what is the prospect that I have as a beginner, hmm, even maybe without taste, just Jataruchi doing Vaidhi Bhakti with that ideal in mind, waiting for taste to come? Does he hear my prayers? And Vishwana says, well, we could say, no, the prayers go to the Paramatma. But, it, but don't think like that, he said, no. Hmm. And don't think like that. They go to Krishna. And he gives the example that in Dwarka, Krishna's Madhurya is overridden by his Aishvarya. There, Uddhava is his counselor. And Uddhava says, this is mind-blowing. You are the supreme god, omniscient. You know everything, but you ask me for advice. Hmm. So this is an instance in which his Aishvarya is highlighted by Uddhava hmm, in the context of his Madhurya expressing itself. Like, what do you think, Uddhava? What should I do? Hmm? And he said, <laughs> he said, this is amazing. You're like omniscient and you're asking me. So he says, Vishnu says, in Braj, the, the equation is reversed. Hmm? And the Madhurya takes precedence over the uh, Aishvarya, hmm? but the doesn't mean that the Aishvarya is not there, just like it doesn't mean that the Madhurya is not there in Dwarka. It is, obviously, he's asking our Uddhava, you know, what should I do? What do you think? What do the scriptures say here? <laughs> so both are there, is the point, in Dwarka, in a place where Aishvarya is prominent. So he says, both are also there in Vrindavan, where the Madhurya is prominent. And as a result of that, the omniscience of Krishna, which recedes to the background in terms of the interplay with his devotees in the Leela, hmm, um, it nonetheless is um, alive and well in terms of being able to hear the prayers and the feel the sincerity of the offering of the sadhaka hmm, in this world. So uh, it wouldn't be hard for Krishna to hear your prayers and feel your sincerity, to know your heart and, and so forth. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you, Gomaj. I, I have one follow-up. Would you say that Krishna feels compassion mostly towards his beginning devotees and that compassion slowly transforms into longing, I guess, as his devotees advance? Longing on whose part? Krishna, it, to meet with his devotee. Yeah, that's right. Good answer. Yeah, that's what I hope you would say. Krishna has longing to meet the devotee, but prior to his longing, yes, he shows compassion. And as the devotee starts to long, then Krishna will long for him. Hmm? So, Therefore, you will find many of the prayers You're frozen. Did he go away? <laughs> He's back. Hello? Hello? I can't hear you. Can you see me? Um, are you are you on English? You need original audio? No. There, how's that? Yeah, that's good. I can hear you now. So, um, where was I? Um, um, uh, 
You just left off talking about how as the devotee increases his longing for Krishna, how that affects Krishna. The devotee increases his longing. And therefore, you will see that um, a lot of the prayers that I referred to earlier, mm -hmm. a lot of them are very suitable uh, and, and directed towards sadhakas rather than the prayers. That I could be more missive, that I could express in my gratitude, uh, 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 petitioning the Lord for his compassion, and so forth. And these types of prayers are appropriate primarily for sadhana bhakti. Sadhana bhakti prayers uh, are predominantly um, of, this, of this nature, uh, petitioning Bhagwan for submission that I could become a Sharanagatu, that I could give, allow me to give myself to you, uh, and so forth. Whereas um, in Baba Bhakti, the prayers are primarily characterized by longing. So this is the divide, submission and longing. It's a very beautiful thing if you read Prabhupada's prayer on the Jaladuta, the first half is all about submission, Sharanagati. And then the next, the next half is all about longing. Hmm? It's so, so beautiful the way that all uh, comes together. And uh, I, I chant those prayers of Prabhupada's longing every day. Um, and I was thinking about it today. Um, they're so beautiful, but um, um, what should be emphasized um, in the beginning more than those is the first half of the prayer, how he, how he tried to he petitioned Krishna to give him the power to do his Guru Maharaj's bidding. Mm -hmm. He did it in a very charming way, obviously. Uh, Krishna, you are very uh, uh, attached to Radharani, and if she's pleased with you, your life will be successful. My Guru represents Radharani. She's asked me to do this, so I think you should give me the power to do it. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on with all these prayers of, of submission, and I don't, you know, you know, I don't have the ability, and so forth, only by grace and so forth so a very those are very important uh you know prayers to focus on and as much as we are focusing on those as much as we can say okay Lutaputi, to do somersaults and falling, rolling on the ground. Tomara Milane Bhai Abar She Shukopai Gocharani Guri Din Boy. To go herding cows with Krishna. This is not a not a small thing. <laughs> this is a huge, huge thing. This is God. Hmm? Hmm? Miss Choi. Miss Choi, meaning, of course. <laughs> yeah. This, this is this is God to be in that position. So we have to pass through Sharanagati. We have to we have to get his his compassion, his grace. Okay. What else? Um. Yeah. What else? Uh. Okay. So I think this might have been a follow up question um, from Matthew. So it says, um, "Are Krishna in the heart, Chaita Guru, and Paramatma conceptually the same?" <laughs> How are we to understand the relation or overlap of these features of the absolute? Yes. Um, this is explained in the beginning of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, where Krishna Skaviraj says that the Mahant, the external guru, is a manifestation of the Chaitya Guru. Mm -hmm. God in the heart. Hmm? Um, he emphasizes this um, to underscore the need to pay attention to the Guru and the form in which Krishna has come to us most and made himself most accessible hmm? through that empowered uh, agency of, of Guru Tattva. Therefore, in other places in the Shastra, it's mentioned. Uh, that uh, Acharya Mambijani Yam, for example, Namamani Tavarichit Krishna told Uddhava, you should think the Acharya to be my very self.
representational sense. Sakshadharitvena, Samasta Shastri, all the scriptures say that the Guru is, is directly Krishna. Mm -hmm. Now, again, it's in a representational sense because that verse goes on to say, Sakshadharitvena, Samasta Shastri, Kintu Prabhu, Ya Priya Ivatasya. He says, all the scriptures say that the Guru is directly Krishna. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he's he's very dear to Krishna. Kintu, but he kintu prabhu ya priya evatas. How can he be Krishna and be and dear to Krishna? So, so it's different than than in in the in, in waiting sense in which the guru is thought to be one with with Brahman, uh, but one in a representational sense. So I think that you understand that. Uh, but the question is more about uh, Chaitya Guru Paramatma. And then the guru is a manifestation, Chaitya Guru is a the guru is a manifestation of the Paramatma uh, and so forth. The, the Paramatma is a, um, is the oversoul of the world, right? Mm -hmm. He comes in three forms, as the source of the world, as the source, of each universe in the multiverse and the oversoul of each individual in every heart, in every atom, right? So these are the three Purusha avatars of, of Vishnu. And, um, and their jurisdiction is the world, right? And the world is full of desires. We find in Shikshastakam of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which I've written a commentary on, um, there it is mentioned that Nadanam Najanam Nasundarim Kavitam Vaja Vadisha Kamahe Mama Janmani Janmanishwari Bhavatad Bhakti Rahitakita. In two places in this verse, the Jagadishwar is mentioned. Nadanam Najanam Nasundarim Kavitam Ba. Jagadisha Kamaya Kamaya. I have no kama, I have no desire for wealth, followers, relationships in this world, uh, the, the, the subtlety of uh, literary accomplishment, poetry, Nadanam, Najanam, Nasundarim, Kavitam Vad, Jagadisha Kamaya, which is all the implication is, which is all overseen by the Paramatma. Mm -hmm. He's presiding over the world of, of material desires as a witness, right? And he says, Nadanam Najanam Nasundarim Kabitam Baja Gadishkamari, Mama Janmani, Janmanishwari, Janmanishwari Bhagavatar Bhakti Rahay Tikitwe. So, what's happening in this verse is Mahaprabhu is passing from a worship of the over soul of the world, so to speak. And turning that paramatma in the heart into pranishwar, mama janmane janmanishwari, babatad bhakti rohitakito. So that paramatma now has turned into his ishtadevata, which is Krishna. Hmm? Um, so who is in the heart? That depends on how we approach. For the ordinary person, the paramatma is there. For the devotee, hmm? as he or she advances, then his, his or her ideal as Ram, as Krishna, and so forth, will take the place of the Paramatma. Paramatma, so to speak, will be replaced by the Pranishwar. Mm -hmm. um, and in Rag Bhakti, which is our line, then it's thought that that Pranishwar Paramatma, Chaitya Guru is now is 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 Prajendranandan. This is mentioned directly in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna himself. Hmm. So uh, we look in that way. Chaitya Guru is Krishna, hmm. Arishta Devata, hmm. and um, of course, you know, for that to be really the case, then we have to clear our hearts out through bhakti of all the other desires and so forth. Mahaprabhu was speaking about a stage we call Ruchi, where there's real taste for the practice. He has no taste for, 
He says, I don't care if I take birth again and again. It doesn't matter. I'm not concerned with that. Hmm. I just uh, uh, want to engage in bhakti, life after life. Devotees sometimes ask, you know, will I go back to God in one life? I'd say, in one life, you will. You know, which one? <laughs> in one, you will. And in the one um, where it comes to this, where you don't care about whether you take birth or not, and you just want to serve, that's the one. Hmm? That's the one. So when you stop asking that question, when you stop looking at your watch, then it's possible. Hmm? That is beyond time. Hmm? You want to go beyond time, you've got to stop looking at the watch here. Hmm? So we think in this way of the Chaiti Guru hmm, as Krishna and, and the Guru to be the representative of Brajana Nanda and Krishna, not of the uh, Paramatma, overlord of the soul, who merges into Narayan and Vaikuntha. Um, and, um, and therein, there's Aishvarya Bhav and so forth. Now, I, I don't know if I fully answered your question. If not, I'll... Um, you froze, but he did come in, in the chat. Thank you for tying that together so beautifully. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Right. Helpful. How are you feeling right now? Who's asking? Um, I'm asking. Because <laughs> you said that you weren't feeling well. I'm feeling weak. We only have a couple of minutes, so maybe we should. Yeah. I was there. It's been an interesting session. We had some good, good discussions, so I appreciate it. And hope with you again next week. Okay. How do you feel? Okay. How are you both? Thank you. Hope you feel better and can rest. Thank you. Okay. Let me get to the announcements because I don't have them open. Um, That was a good class today. I mean, it's always a good class. But I feel like I'm forgetting to do stuff. Okay. So on Monday, this is for December because we're in December now. So on Monday, Mohini Dasi is giving a class exploring the mercy of Sri Nityananda through song and Shastra part two. And on Tuesdays, uh, Guru Nishta is giving class, Jiva Dharma, the true purpose of human life. And then on Wednesdays, Dula is giving class on Krishna Sandarbha. And then on Thursday morning, earlier than the regular classes, um, Pamanabha Swami is doing questions and answers at 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Um, and then on Thursdays, Archana is doing her interviews, um, the beauty and messiness of Asadika's journey. And then on Fridays, Atula Nanda Swami is uh, giving class the Chatur Sloka, Sloki of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And then Asha Maharaj is giving classes on Saturday, the Shelter of Sri Guru, the key to the Temple of Bhakti. That's, that's a good title. And then on Sundays, we're back here. Um, thanks everyone for being patient with me and thanks for being here. Okay. Arrivo. <laughs>